my silliest hat for the occasion. I'm not a Dreinschlag member, but let's say I'm inspired by them, especially for the silly hat. Welcome to my second castle here in Mons. That's the second castle, the one that I work for, because the first one I live in. But enough chit chat, and let me take you to uh, touring this wonderful exhibition of mine. This exhibition displays objects, weapons and documents about fighting, actually European martial arts from the 15th to the 21st century, because actually it includes bits of HEMA, as I will showcase in this video. This is really fun and we have been experimenting a lot. This is not our first uh, try, but this one is a pretty well, um, I'd say, mature uh, tryout. At the entrance of the exhibition, the visitors stumble upon this video. The core idea is here. From the book emerges something that is behind it. That is the knowledge that the body has of martial arts, as you know. This was shot for another exhibition that we did in Minsk. And this is actually no video games. Of course, it is an actual uh, practitioner, Jacopo del Penso. Nice. So as you can see, the whole idea of this exhibition is for, it, for, for instance, this time you don't showcase the weapons behind the glass, but without glasses and in connection with the body. So in this installation you have my books and the books about fighting. The idea is to show the difference to the visitors. Of course, five books with different era. We had previously, I just installed it this morning, the one, uh, the Egonov one, is brand new from this morning. Before we had one from uh, on loan from Opera Nova, uh, the Martial Arts Museum. It was a Joachim Meyer original print, and we also had a Morozzo. And now we have here, as I said, the Egonov and a beautiful Fabris, a new acquisition by our museum and below uh, a very special one as well uh, regarding the early beginnings of the British Army. Well, you know what it is, the visitors don't. So we can here spend time to read this and understand that there is a fundamental difference with the other one. The other one or other type of technical literature that speaks or tells stories about fighting. For example, here we have a chivalry crowns, we have a tournament book, and we have also an illustrated chronicles. Down at the bottom, two special things. The first one is uh, the beginning of the drill books. This is army manual. This is a bit different of the five books, as you know. And this one was on loan only, only on the first six months of the exhibition. It was the first um, technical treatise about archery. Not the talks of food, the English one, but a new one. Speaking of reading, you can also read the exhibition catalog. And the uh, funny thing is now, it's going to be open access in a few weeks now. So here you can have all of the exhibition text plus some bonuses that you don't have in the exhibition. So this you can access online. Sadly, it's French, so you have to train your French. So let's start with the edge weapon. In this first installation, you can see the installation for the two-handed sword or the long sword. In the background, you see the posture or the connection with the fight book of Achille Marozzo in Modena 1536. Maybe you can notice that there is an inconsistency here. There is the posture shown like this and the actual mannequin is like this. Of course, sometimes when I get bored here, I come and I change the postures. This is the end of the sword blow that comes from um, below and also the guardia di faccia, so this weird posture like this. So yeah, you never get bored when you come again, then the whole exhibition has changed. Oh, you can see also over here in the installation uh, a loan from Kaino Sword, their brand new sword, so that the visitors can see how heavy it is. The Hubbard. Uh, of course. Why of course? Because we are in the Swiss Museum, so we had to have halberds. 
And um, it is in connection with Paul Sector who has a large section about staff weapons and uh, several plays for the Hellborn. Here, in the perfect position to deliver an upward or a rising blow to the face. Not one, but two rapiers. Quite funny, it's difficult to find a fight book section where you have double rapier into play. Heinrich von Gunthod had such a section. And why we, did, we needed this? Because we have here a wonderful masterpiece, one of the favorites of my collection. There are three known rapiers that actually um, are one, but divide into two weapons and aligns and fits perfectly. Uh, three known in public collections. Uh, this is one. Very, very fine example. I really like this weapon. Man, I could tell you. Um, and for those who don't know this, this is a weapon of cheater. Of course, because when you engage into a duel of honor at the end of the 16th century or 17th century, you have to negotiate which kind of weapon you will fight uh, with your opponent. And when you say, well, of course, we will fight single uh, sword, uh, not with dagger or with hat or with cape. And of course, when the drill begins very early in the morning, in my scabbard, it looks like it's one. And when I draw it out, it's too late for him. I don't have one weapon, but two. Small advantage. And at the end of the edge weapon section, there is the evolution towards the 20th century. So above me, you have a pair of dueling weapon, sharp, the third, one of these first fencing masks, and a pair of uh, training weapons, which is still the actual buttons on the, on the side. So going back in the beginning of the room, on the other side you have the section about the shooting weapons, and we start with the bow, of course. And this is a great disappointment, because of course, as shown as the illustration below and upside that you don't see, uh, you can see the bow in action, it's like this. But of course we could not have this one, so because, as you know, um, bows, they don't like to be tensed, right? So you only uh, stretch them when you are about to shoot and when you finish shooting, you take them out. So here, the body posture is him stretching his bow. And everybody and every visitor is, are, what is this? And always I have to explain. And then the crossbow, of course, more firepower. Uh, this weapon is nice. Everybody, every little children, when they come, they say, well, why is he dead? So no, he's not dead, he's just holding his arrow from his teeth. Uh, here, interesting, it's a very, very nice example of a 15th century crossbow of our collection. And of course, as you know, you need tools to do this. The little videos on each of the displays actually show uh, weapons in action. And here you can see the difference between this system, this system, and this one. And here we move to firearms with a very, very fine example uh, of 1620 uh, early firearm with this system as a double ignition system. And uh, this one is in connection to the, the end of the, of the, well, not the end of the fight books, but let's say the end of the era where the drill books, literary books appear in the 1630s, the 30 years wars. Um, very fine example. And the video, I'm quite proud of this. We didn't shoot it, but uh, it comes from the, uh, another very fine arms and armor museum in Switzerland, in Zolotur, the old Zeughaus, the arsenal, where they uh, have a mediation, a uh, public outreach video with different shooting systems in action. And at the end of the section about the shooting weapons, you also have the evolution towards the 20th century with different, well, uh, evolving mechanism to uh, trigger mechanism, up to the culasse and uh, cartouche, I don't know the English word for this. Uh, also, since we are this military museum, the largest uh, objects in our collections are actually these kinds, so the choice was very difficult. On this section, at the end of the room of the exhibition, we have the section about defensive weapons. Of course, not always it is about swords and fire and arms, but also armor. Armor is a weapon, as you, as you well know. 
Uh, here, on this installation, which I'm really proud of, you have a media station to browse through different videos, including the one that you already know, so I will not speak about them. And you have four pieces. Two of them are original objects, and two are replicas. I'll let you guess which is which. This is the little game I always play with visitors. Of course, you have two replicas, one here and one here. And uh, one replica is for decoration purposes, so this you would not like to put this on. It cannot move, it will even hurt you when you put them on. Uh, very heavy and uh, yeah, sheets of metal. And you have mine. Uh, this one you know as well. And this is a replica not made to look like it is, but made to actually work like it should be. So this is a copy made for, uh, in the context of a research project. And side by side, you also have other uh, pieces. Here, uh, a full set of uh, someone sitting into an airplane uh, firing a gun in the Second World War, uh, American. Why? Of course, you know, because it's the same weight between the two, and the idea is to uh, dispel the myth about uh, all of this, but I will not spend more, more time on this. And here we have two. We are uh, located in the shore of the lake of uh, Geneva or Lac Lemon, and this is the Duchy of Savoy. So this is the half armor of the 17th century of the Duchy of Savoy. Pikeman armor. What a boring classical exhibition is this, right? It says in the subtitle interactive. So we have built a few interactive display. One is about the weight of weapon, and of course. I am tired of explaining to any and each visitors that weapons are not that heavy. And usually, as you know, everybody says, well, it's at least 10 kilos or 5 kilos. 5 kilos is the average for a sword. So we've built a stupid sword that actually weighs 5 kilograms. So people can see what a 5 kilogram sword is. And then they are asked to compare it with the actual weight. And then they can move. You've seen the installation on the long sword, so here they have a long sword weight. They have the rapier, that you can also feel in the hands. And of course, we have the hammer, which is actually here another type, but it's about the same. Also, only about weight. Sadly, this installation is built for adults or big children. And uh, I was willing to have this side by side with smaller weapons. We didn't have neither the time nor the money, but other installations are included for both an adult version and a children's version. Let's have a look. Here you can see the first installation. It allows the visitor to try out the guards based on basic information and on advanced information with different guards. This is taken from the system of the so-called Johannes Lichtenauer Zedel. This is for the little ones and you also have the ones for adults. So basically also with the marks on the floor, the visitor is allowed to try out moving the sword between the guards and well, have fun with this. The second one is a little bit more advanced. Uh, this one try gives a little bit of freedom of movement as you can see, and they can try the blows. And here, the basic section is based, and also the advanced one, is based on Joachim Meyer fight book. Also here for the adults. You can see here visitors from Poland and Holland trying out this where they were visiting. You have a reading station where you can have uh, a go through facsimiles, uh, late 19th or early 20th century editions. We are lucky to have a very well uh, furbished library to have this. So you have a Novati, you have uh, the facsimiles of uh, Talofer. This is the latest um, 133 uh, translation and edition by uh, Forgang. Um, you can also have a go at different type of books to, uh, well, to mirror the installation. This one I'm really proud of. So this one, you can uh, try on an armor, which is taken for policeman protection uh, uh, for crowd. And uh, this weighed actually 18 kilos. So when you have it, it feels heavy. And then you are asked to compare it with the same load 
but on a backpack. And then you will feel that your body acts very differently. So this is better than words. This is just experiencing. Or we also have uh, set up a child tour of the exhibition. You, to, you are touring the exhibition with uh, superheroes from mythology. And you are asked or tasked with different um, well exercise, uh, like seek and find and other things, uh, trying out to... Uh, get the visitors accustomed to his terminology about these weapons, information about them, the weight, and so on. And uh, the more interesting section is also for adults, this one. The visitors are asked to either uh, write the information from the image, original image, or from the original description of the image or from the treatise of Fiore de Liberi to actual drawing. This is really fun and it's a very good way to let the visitor experience the difficult difficulties in actually writing down that stuff. And this is another fun part. This installation, it changes every month to showcase a different martial discipline. This one, one-handed messer in connection or in context of Johannes Lekuchner fight book, allows modern day HEMA group, local or neighboring, to come the first Saturday of every month to invade the museum and offer hands-on workshops to uh, the visitors or demonstration of their research or fighting skills. We have different and plenty of these uh, events. Actually, we had uh, a little bit more than 12 of these events. Uh, this is one example. So here it was about cane fighting in a very nice setting. See here, the two instructors are watching over their pupils and uh, they are actually dressed sometimes with style, sometimes with less style, as you can see in the picture. We had plenty of different kind of uh, martial disciplines and events. We also had online presentation. Here uh, you recognize Ju, uh, Ju Gary. Here uh, 133 with lots of kids, with Fanny Binard, really nice. We had Saber. We had uh, also different kinds of, uh, oh, here, bayonet fencing, as you can see. Really nice. Um, we also hosted small events. Here it was about a modern day um, system of fighting, the Irish stick fighting, with the Irish stick fighters here. You can see them uh, for a little sparring demonstration on the side. So yeah, the public was really interested and interesting as well. We still have three to go. The last part uh, of the interactive experience is actually the website where you have all videos and also all kind of uh, different audiovisual content additional. You can see, for example, a never printed map of the different source material uh, here. And um, we also had um, different experiments with how to transmit fighting techniques. Here you can see an image of the original fight book, uh, a pair of fighters actually playing it, and someone reading the original text with English subtitles, which is a very nice fit. Actually works very well, uh, also gives you a taste of different languages. Here, uh, Joachim Meyer. But we also had, for example, this one you may know, and uh, try to uh, recognize who is the voiceover. And if you find, write me an email, I send you a gift. Ha! Well, that's about it. You've seen it all. So please, if you have a chance and you ever come by to Switzerland, uh, ring me or send me an email. I'll give you a private tour for you or your group. We are we will be open until the 18th of April. This will be the longest temporary exhibit in the history of the castle since uh, it was originally intended to have been finished well last year and we will have the exhibition on display for a year and a half. So this is good. If you have time, come by and uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the drive online.